are listening to This is Oklahoma, hosted by Mike Hearn, telling stories of Oklahomans and those that have made it their home. Before we get into today's episode, I want to tell you a little bit about our current sponsors, uh, the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. As you well know, if you've been following This Is Oklahoma, they've been a huge part of this podcast. So this podcast is presented by the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, telling an Oklahoma story through its people since 1927. For more information on the Hall of Fame, go to www.oklahomahof.com and follow them on Instagram for daily updates at Oklahoma HOF. What's up, guys? Welcome back to another episode of This Is Oklahoma. Mike Hearn here, your host, back with another episode coming to you with part two of our interview with tw shannon uh mate thanks for having me back um been about a couple of weeks right and and we've probably traveled a little bit but glad to get back on the schedule i know you're a busy man uh and excited to kind of finish up our chat um i think the last time we sat down we just got finished or we were just starting to talk about kind of like your involvement with the bank um and you know before we do we did get into all that stuff uh you know, we, we talked about you walking in and meeting with the leader of the free world, right? And kind of how <laughs> cool that feeling is, regardless of who that man is and or whatever people think of that man as a position in general. When you walk in to meet the leader of the free world, like that's that's a pretty awesome experience. Uh, and you shared some great stories about that. But coming back to like working at, you know, getting the position at the bank and, and the impact that you mentioned, you know, the, the, the stats that you laid down, I mean, it's a huge impact that you guys have had. And, you know, coming towards the end of, of a year that was uncertain for a lot of people, you know, with the loans. I know you mentioned, you know, you guys were of the of the few first ones, you know, first movers to, to agree to that and to go forward with it and, and kind of, you know, trust that it would work out and also like work for your community and, and you know, just kind of give them what they deserve really that that was really cool to hear but for part two i kind of like you know touch a little bit more on um you know the the bank itself and the social media stuff that you do and the marketing and i think you just go at it a different way compared to a lot of other businesses and other banks and stuff and tell me a little bit about kind of like you know how why i guess you value the importance of you know the marketing side via social media and stuff like that yeah well i I think part of it really lies in the fact that i have kind of a a pretty unconventional path to being ceo of a bank right Right. i didn't grow up in the finance world Mm -hmm. i didn't grow up uh kind of in the banking world even now i've had a chance to when governor anatubby called me and asked me about being a part of the bank he you know i told him i said you know i've never run a bank before right i think i mentioned that yeah and uh, and he said, yeah, but we wanted somebody who understands, you know, uh, who understands relationships and leadership. And I'd certainly done a lot of that. So I thought, all right, I'll apply the task at hand. And so I think that perspective is different from other bankers, right? Because I don't really think inside the box. Right. I'm not limited to that. Now, honestly, the first, um, uh, you know, probably six to nine months, you know, there was some there was some insecurity <laughs> yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah. Growing pains. But but I yeah. learned very quickly that, you know, the, the skill set that I've been blessed with through my life experiences and work experiences, mm-hmm. that they, a lot of that skill set was transferable. And and you know, building a team in empowering people, encouraging people, that's what we do. Mm-hmm. And then also recognizing the storytelling piece. I see social media as an extension of storytelling. I think the people yeah. that do things well are great storytellers. I mean, you think about, you know, the the people that have really made an impact and a difference. You know, it's not just that Steve Jobs was a smart guy, right? Mm-hmm. He was a smart guy, yes, but he also was able to tell a story. He was able to to to, to help people connect yeah. on a level that was very different than just the nuts and bolts of building a cool invention. It, it was more than that. It was the it was this uh, the the um, uh, what are these called when you wear a, it was it was the hoodie right yeah, it yeah, was yeah. the it, it was the the different culture at at apple working right. for apple became so it wasn't just the product it was the culture surrounding the product mm-hmm. and and i think ceos have an opportunity to be good storytellers and yeah. and i think the chickasaw people native americans in general we're oklahoma's first storytellers and so 
telling the story about what's great about that's happening at this bank and what's happening in our community, I'm happy to do it. And I use every opportunity yeah. we can to do that. Right. And I mean, to that point, like being a great storyteller, like I think you as well, like you just mentioned, have embraced that because, you know, you have your own personal brand, right? I don't know any other bank CEOs that have their own personal brand or their own personal logo even, right? That they actually put out there, right? I mean, some may have one and they might put it on their golf bag and say, that's cool. But, you know, you, you have your own personal brand. And I think, you know, from that perspective, like that, that's a cool thing to have. But you embrace that, right? Like that's, yeah. Yeah. There's no doubt I have the biggest ego in the room, right? right that's just, that's just that's just a, no, no. Honestly, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, yeah. so someone asked me that about the other day about humility, and they said, "You, know, you seem like a pretty humble guy. How do you? What do you do?" I said, "Listen, being humble is pretty easy for me because I know me. I know the real me. I go home with me. So uh, if, if you knew me as well as I do, you'd be humble too." But, yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, I do think um, you know we all do have a brand, you know, and 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 you know having uh, been in some pretty high profile. Uh, positions before uh, I'm probably more acutely aware of my brand maybe than some because I've had to think about it as a living when you're an elected official right that that matters I mean it's part of the legislative process and and so my brain naturally goes there uh, but I, I think the the way that you kind of keep that in check because I think you, you do got to do a personal ego check yeah. every now and then make sure you're not just out there trying I think it's what's your motivation and if your motivation is to really build better lives like we you know like we commit to do here at Chickasaw Community Bank if it's really about helping people and providing a hand up to people around you and yeah, and, yeah. And, and hoping that people around you succeed and do well I think it's all worth it and I think storytelling is part of it and that's all yeah. that branding really is it's what's your story and everybody has one yeah. uh, everyone's unique I'm always now I am I gotta be honest I'm always fascinated that people take interest in my when people do take interest in my story because mm -hmm. I think like everybody we think well my story is just my story. It, it you know, it, yeah, it just yeah. happened, but um, it, it it's unique to everybody. Like I'm, I'm fascinated by your story. Coming right. here from a different country, staying for a girl. Yeah, uh, I mean, you know, it's a classic story of a boy meets girl, uh, but it's the intricacies and the people involved and the twists and turns and the mm -hmm. and the disappointments in that story that really provide the color and the texture and more importantly the lessons. Those yeah. are the lessons. Like there are lessons in people's story, which is why that's 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 the appeal of podcasts, right? right. It's, it's hearing people's stories yeah, yeah. and extrapolating what's the lesson in that story. Mm -hmm. It's not just, oh, you know, stroke and ego. Let me tell you about how great I am. Because, um, yeah. frankly, that wouldn't take... It certainly wouldn't take two episodes, much less <laughs> one. Um, we, we could do that in probably about 30 seconds for me. Yeah. But that, I certainly got a story to tell. Mm -hmm. um, it, it hadn't always been... Uh, roses and 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 mm -hmm. you know uh, hadn't always been rainbows and unicorns yeah, yeah. Uh, like like my like my social media would tell you, you know I, I always tell my family we want to be the people that we post about on social media because those people have no problems right. they're smiling all Perfect the time life. everything's yeah. great yeah. so we strive to be those people but we know we're not and that's right. that's all part of the story yeah 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 and and you're right it's just having that awareness right that like you know it's not all perfect and you, and you learn so much from the you know the lessons that come from the struggles and disappointments whatever that may be you know everyone struggles with something just on a different scale right um to the point of having like a personal brand and you mentioned coming from being in politics and coming from you know having a being an elected official and continuing that then through being you know working with the bank and being the ceo of the bank do you see the the personal brand as like i guess playing the long game maybe going like potentially going back into politics after you know just but i mean you could have come into the banks what, what i'm getting at is like you could have come into your current role and just been like ah, oh, my personal brand thing I, I don't need it as a, so much right i actually did so it's funny you mentioned that that's exactly where i thought yeah. i thought in my in my own um kind of mind of, of wanting to measure up to being a seat bank ceo and, yeah, and yeah. wanting my my colleagues and my direct reports to take me seriously, mm -hmm. I really tried to hide from that, almost pretend like that part yeah. of my life, the public uh, elected official, that that didn't exist. I wanted to get as far away from that as possible. Uh, and and then we, we had the idea of when we were really starting, we rebranded we re the bank to Chickasaw Community Bank, and we actually hired a consultant who mm -hmm. came in, and we were asking, how do we grow 
our our presence. It wasn't just social media presence. Yeah. It was really how do we establish the brand name of the bank? And they made two recommendations to us. The first one was they said you should change your name. Bank Two is not a very good name. Yeah, uh, it's a it's a sucky name. Right. And I thought, well, I agree with that. And they said. You know what? What do you think would be the most impact that would represent who you are? And I said Chickasaw Community Bank. I thought, mm -hmm. you know, the Chickasaws have done a great job with branding. It's who we are. It's who we right. strive to be. It sets a standard. And then the, the the other thing that they told us was when they said when you're growing your market share and how do you establish that brand and what that means. Yeah. They said, well, what about your CEO? They said, you know, the consultant said, you know, you have two types of CEOs in the world, right? You've got the Steve Jobs model where mm -hmm. the persona of that leader is built into the brand of the of right. the uh, of the company it's part of it the company kind of leads with that mm -hmm. and you've got others like like you know um, Jeff Bezos who I mean, he's kind of come into more of his own now right. But most people didn't know who he was. Bigger, more powerful, more influential company. But no one had any clue who mm -hmm. the guy was. And both models work well. Uh, but the um, when we started looking at social media, the consultant said, well, listen, we're going to be starting from scratch with the bank because the bank had no presence. Why don't you leverage, because I had, I think, you know, 50,000 mm -hmm. something, you know, maybe, you know, total yeah. across media is maybe close to 100,000 different followers or, or fans, whatever they're called. And he said, why don't you leverage that? And there was a real point of, oh, I don't know. Like, <laughs> like I spent yeah. the last year and a half trying to convince people that, you know, right. I was more than elected official, that that didn't exist. And he said, no, lean into it. Like, mm -hmm. this is this is part of who you are. It is part of your brand. You can't get away from it. Yeah. Um, and so we did that. We, we leaned into it. And so I, I use a lot of my social media to leverage it for the bank to, to mm -hmm. you know, I want people who tune into me because I'm this, you know, crazy right wing conservative. <laughs> um, um, I want them also to yeah. know I'm this crazy right wing conservative who, yeah. by the way, could make you a really great deal on your on your home loan or right. could really, you know, help you grow your business with mm -hmm. some of the products we have there. So it, it is it is a bit strategic, uh, but, but it, it sometimes it does feel a little. Um, I gotta admit, sometimes it's a little embarrassing to, because mm. to, to, you know, we'll, we'll we'll go places and 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 people are are kind and polite and 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 they they want to talk about that and and and, that, and that's fine. And I yeah. I've just learned to to you know to just own it as part of who I am. But but I've also been very clear. You know, like I mentioned earlier, I had wonderful parents who really grounded me, and I've always been very uh, clear. If I have a superpower, yeah. it's that I, I've never allowed what I do to define who I am. Um, it's not. It's it's separate. What I do is what I do. What I do yeah. for a living is what I do, what I partake in. And, and sometimes those are successful. Mm -hmm. Most time they're not. Uh, and when they are, you, 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 you celebrate it. And when it's not, you learn the lesson from it. But ultimately... Um, you know, I'm I'm T. W. Shannon. I'm, I'm I'm a guy who's been blessed with some amazing opportunities. Um, uh, you know, and that first one was being born in the greatest, freest country in the world, and then Damn. second of that was being born, and I think is the greatest state. Uh, I think Oklahoma is an amazing state, a young state. Uh, we're we're a we're a young state and a small state with really big dreams, and because we're a new, we're still a new state. Yeah, uh, we we have a real opportunity. To, to as 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 younger adults as as middle aged adults now, we still have an opportunity to help chart that course for our state. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, and that that part motivates me. Yeah, back to what you said about kind of what name stands out to you, and you you know you threw out the you know Chickasaw Community Bank, which which makes so much sense, right? Because of the impact, right, that the tribe has had and the brand that the tribes had, you know, you could not just, I mean, most people would think of the ballpark, right? But there's so much other stuff that goes on to it. What for you, I guess, growing up, you know, and having this brand and this being a part of the tribe growing up, like, what was your kind of view and, and just kind of, because you've grown up with it, right, mm -hmm. as well, of just, mm -hmm. you know, kind of in the modern era of social media, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. The, the internet is what I mean from that. Like, what what has it been like from your perspective, just watching it grow and being a part of it and now having, like I said, being a, you, know, you didn't think you'd be a CEO of the bank with a name on the door, right? Yeah. So You, you know, it, it's amazing. Um, you know, I remember as a kid, so my, my Chickasaw roots come from my father, and it's through my his mother, my grandmother. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and she was adamant 
that we be aware of our Chickasaw identity, even though most of my family yeah. is not very identifiable Chickasaw. Mm-hmm. Um, she was very adamant that we knew about that heritage and that it was a part of our life. And that our, our tri- I remember her whenever uh, 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 someone was born in the family, she was adamant that we yeah. were enrolled members of the Chickasaw. It wasn't enough just to be Chickasaw. Yes, you're born, you know, with the heritage that you have. Right. But, you know, tribal tribal membership is a political designation. And she made mm-hmm. sure. And oftentimes we were like, why? What's the, you know, yeah. why, you, know you know, now there's some tangible benefit to being t- Chickasaw for many people. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for her at the time, there really wasn't a tangible benefit. It was it was more of a heritage celebration. She knew yeah. that heritage, and she made sure that we, as as grandkids and kids, did. Even sometimes when we didn't, as kids, didn't we didn't see the importance of it. You know, right. you, you didn't care. And then it was amazing as I got older to recognize um, how Chickasaw values were a part of my life more than I thought. How Chickasaw. Um, um, even you know, uh, you know, diet. Some of the foods that we ate, I didn't know they were mm-hmm. Chickasaw meals and dishes. I didn't know Darn. that they were traditional. I just thought they were my grandmother's uh, uh, deal. But but I also had a unique experience. Um, you know, when I was in law school, the, ch- the tribe was very helpful with scholarships for me. I mean, me and my wife. I mean, we couldn't have existed. We got married when I was in law school. Yeah, we yeah. couldn't have existed without the support of the tribe. I mean, it, it made a difference. And and then certainly when I was running for office, you know, a lot of the uh, I had worked at the Chickasaw Nation, and a lot of the executive team and, and management team and frontline yeah. workers were a big part of my election and supporting me. And so when I got a chance to to come work at the bank, the, the, when Governor Anatubby called me about coming to work here and we had a conversation, after I got off the phone, the thing that went through my mind more than anything was, okay, this is the first opportunity where I can actually make a contribution back to the tribe. The tribe has given so much to me and been such a part. Mm-hmm. Uh, I've been such a benefactor of all of Governor Anatubby's wonderful leadership that this was like I felt like the first time where I could actually contribute something and so to me getting here and and, and focusing on the bottom line and earning uh, a a dividend and paying that dividend to the tribe or reinvesting back into the bank and growing the bank's market share you know I do it as a proud Chickasaw citizen because it it means so much more because we're actually making a contribution and oh by the way the great part about that I know that many people, sometimes that can feel exclusive because you're not a tribal member. Right. But the reality is um, all of the benefit that comes from the Chickasaw Nation financially, it mm-hmm. all gets reinvested back into the tribal government, which happens to be in a in Oklahoma. So the state benefits yeah. when the Chickasaw Nation does well. So it's an amazing uh, opportunity. But again, for me, it, it, it's more than just earning a paycheck. I mean, it really is. It's, it's like a, um, it's almost like the family business, you know? It's, yeah, it's yeah. like, I, I know that if this bank does well and we make a, con- and even though on the grand scale of things, I mean, we're, we're a small community bank, you know, compared to Windstar or right. or some of the other, you know, amazing healthcare facilities or, you know, we're a real small contributor. Mm-hmm. But my goal, honestly, my personal goal is I want this bank to be the biggest contributor. I want us to yeah. contribute a bigger dividend than Windstar. We got a long way to go. Yeah. Uh, but uh, that is my goal because I believe so much in the mission of building better lives for everyone and advancing the overall quality of life of the Chickasaw people. Yeah. Like, that's ingrained in me and, and it's a privilege to sit in this seat and, and you know, and feel like you're making a difference, right? Yeah, and then like I said, you you know, you, you go back to like, well, you know, you, you had no idea why your grandma was putting this plate in front of you yeah. and what it meant, right? And now you do, and like you're right, like having that moment, to like wow, this is the first time I actually get to give back, you know, and and a lot of people don't get that opportunity right or, or even or they might get that opportunity and it's in totally different ways it might be just by volunteering or whatever it is but it's really cool for you to just you know just hear you speak about that right it's kind of like a you, hair on the back of your neck sh- moment sure I, i'll tell you a funny story real quick as a kid i remember we were down uh so my great grandparents who i got to know they lived and they were chickasaw um they're they're allotted lands chickasaw lands we are still in the family and uh, we would go down every year but but this was a kid they were actually my great grandparents were still living but i was down with my grand mother and I remember we were walking and they, they still own the, I think they had still about 40 acres mm-hmm. of the 160 that they were allotted um, we were walking and I remember her reaching down and um, 
uh, picking up what I thought was grass yeah. and eating it. She just kind of wiped it off and was eating. And I thought, oh my gosh, you know, I must have been like seven or eight, and I thought, grandma's losing her marbles. You know, she's like <laughs> eating grass. And and I and I later learned that she was eating poke salad. She loved poke salad, and she loved raw vegetables. Anyway, poke salad. I don't know if you're familiar. It's a wild yeah. green. Okay. And it's a it's a it's a pretty popular Chickasaw dish. Uh, that my grandmother would prepare. Yeah, I, I I didn't you know I didn't like most kids. I didn't like green vegetables. I didn't know them. I thought she was just you know losing her marbles and, and yeah. eating grass. Come to find out, she liked poke salad. She liked it fresh. So when we were out walking. She saw some. She wiped it off and she would chew it and eat yeah. it and, and pick it. And uh, you know it was those just kind of rare moments where you realize that was a very Chickasaw thing to do. Most most people don't walk <laughs> around eating raw poke salad, right? Yeah. Uh, but it, it comes full circle later on when I'm reading about Chickasaw culture and I and I get yeah. the calendar that we get every year from the Chickasaw Nation and it list the poke salad meal like it took me back to that feel yeah. with my grandmother I'm thinking it was a very Chickasaw thing right yeah yeah because at the time you're like she's going nuts yeah yeah yeah, yeah that's <laughs> she's right she's losing right. her that's mind right. that's right like, I'm gonna tell your parents like now, grandma's doing that thing again <laughs> now, now full disclosure I gotta be honest I don't really like poke salad uh, <laughs> it, it's kind of a bit of that memory though yeah, it's yeah, special the memory the memory's yeah. super yeah. special yeah. and I try I try all the Chickasaw dishes some of them you know Pashofa some others you, you just the, the grape dumplings I like yeah yeah, uh, yeah. but one, one of the one of the things that I think mutually between us like you know uh the Oklahoma Hall of Fame is a huge spot, sure. part of our both our lives, right? With me, with the podcast, and obviously yourself, and and the chicks have done so much for the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. I'm curious to know why, but also like you have a personal it kind of you have a personal interest in the Hall of Fame because your daughter's on the team board, right? Mm-hmm. Is that right? Mm-hmm. She is. You know, yeah. so so like it's so special to have such you know an impact, but also such a contributor like the the nation, right? Yeah. To just to do what they do, and you know, all they're always doing great things for the Hall of Fame. So from your perspective, I mean. Why do you think that's so important? And then also, like, why 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 is your daughter a part of the team board as well? Well, a couple of things. So, as, you know, I'm on the board of, mm-hmm. of the Hall of Fame, and as a board member, you know, it's, it's one of the great privileges of a lifetime for yeah. me to, to serve on that board because, again, I'm, I'm big into storytelling. Um, I think it's one of our greatest yeah. um, assets as 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 humans, um, frankly. And and that is what the Hall of Fame is all about. And as I mentioned, the Chickasaw people, Native Americans, are Oklahoma's original storytellers. Mm-hmm. And so I think it's only befitting that Governor Anatubby, I think the most, not probably, he is the most visionary leader yeah. uh, of, of, of our lifetime and maybe of Oklahoma's history. You know, the fact that he sees that vision and the importance of storytelling and continuing that mission, um, I, I see a lot of... Uh, irony uh, in, in that in that he would see that vision, but it's it's of no surprise to me. And so, telling that story, knowing who you are, you know, I remember reading uh, a book. One of my favorite reads uh, during college was the autobiography of Frederick Douglass. And Frederick Douglass, mm-hmm. he spends a lot of time uh, fascinated in the beginning, particularly about the difference between being born free and being born a slave. And he says the biggest difference between being a f- man who's born free and a man born a slave is a person who's born a slave doesn't know where they came from. They don't know their history. They don't, they don't, and as a result, they don't have anything that they have to live up to. He said, when you're born free, you have a heritage, you have a link, you have yeah. something either to live up to or some things that you want to change and about your, about your destiny. And so the, the value of knowing your history uh, is so important. And um, I'm, I'm glad for, for people like Shannon, uh, who, who shepherd in an amazing way mm-hmm. the Oklahoma Hall of Fame, but even the visionaries and the patriarchs of our state who saw the importance of having the Oklahoma Hall of Fame because it does indeed tell yeah. the story uh, in a unique way. And that's why I was so excited. My daughter was interested in serving on the team board uh, because, again, that's the next generation of that storytelling. And Oklahoma's history, is amazing and sometimes it's easy maybe to discount it because it's such a short history mm-hmm. right compared to you know Boston or or you know other right. or you know that's the one city but you know you think about other you know older civilizations even you know in, in America if you in Oklahoma if it's a hundred years old that's pretty it's ancient pretty ancient <laughs> yeah. right you go to the east coast three or four hundred years is mm-hmm. old you go to Europe a thousand years. You go to the Middle East, yeah. you know, you go to the East, you know, we're talking thousands and thousands of years. So 
um, it's easy to maybe to discount the uh, richness of Oklahoma history if you don't know it. But when you really look at it, it is so fascinating and so unique yeah. and so uh, intertwined with Native people. And so uh, the fact that Governor Anatubby has seen um, the, the, the value of supporting such an organization, I think it only speaks to how important it is. And the fact that my daughter, who's also Chickasaw, is now on the team board, uh, she sees the value. She's going to learn the story uh, in a real way, and that's why it's so important. Yeah. We, we obviously, you know, we talk about the tribe's impact, um, but one of the huge things that happened this year, right, is, is the first American museum, and finally, you know, then then launching the plans to what it, what that land is now going to become, and the museum is just going to be the center of that, with you know the hotel complex coming and just everything about that, and no doubt you've known about this for quite some time, but like the rest of us now, you know, we saw that announcement, the plans, and now the museum's open, because um, you know it was just you know, every time you drive by it, like well. When's it going to open? Like, yeah. What are they doing? You know, what's the land? What's going on? Um, and I personally, I didn't know the significance of the, I thought when you drive past it, I'm like, why is there a giant land? Why is there all that massive hump of grass in the way spoiling the view of downtown? Well, it's not the reason, right? There's a significant reason for that with yeah. the way the sun sets and, and, and that stuff. So um, what, I mean, what, what's it like for you to be excited, you know, to, to have this museum to be open and, and be able to use it and, and the way yeah. you do and, and just kind of, what does that mean to you? Well, it, it's a long time coming, right? And, yeah. uh, you know, having served in the legislature Legislature, I kind of know a lot of the history and had a, you know was even involved. I, I ran legislation at times to support the museum and uh, and as speaker, uh, we oversaw uh, some some legislation that that would have benefited the museum and been involved in some of the fundraising. So yeah, I, I think it's the crown jewel of our state. You know, yeah. we we in Oklahoma we market ourselves as Native America, right? I mean that people mm -hmm. still when you ask them about Oklahoma, yeah. they want to see that cowboys and they want to see the Indians, and they're a little surprised when they get here and they show them a picture of me that I'm, you know, <laughs> that I fit that. It's not exactly the image they had, but um, it is part of our identity. Yeah. And I think that the uh, fam really encapsulates that, um, that identity and is that, and is that uh, really, um, oh, what's the word that I'm looking It's an icon. It's an icon of, of who we are as a civilization. Uh, it tells the story of the 39 tribes that have been here and, yeah. Um, you know, to finally see it. And, and even even th there's also some irony. And I haven't seen anybody really capture this. But the fact that that museum went through so many. I mean, it usually doesn't take 20 something years to get something built. Right. right. Usually after 20 years, somebody says, forget yeah. it, kid, you know, get out of here. Uh, but the fact that it was Governor Anatomy, I mean, let, let's be honest, that would not exist without his leadership and his commitment. Just mm -hmm. diligence year after year, totally committed to seeing its opening and staying with it until it happened. It wouldn't have happened without his perseverance and his leadership. Again, the irony, and it, it so it so mirrors the story of Native Americans and the, the, the story of perseverance, where you've got a people who at one point it was illegal. It was against the law to be Native American. It was a felony. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and how the, you know, over and over, um, there have been attempts to do away with tribal sovereignty, how it's been attempted to be wiped out or at least disrespected. Even now, yeah. we have instances where, uh, you know, there are political figures now who don't respect tribal sovereignty and have mm -hmm. even uh, taken uh, issue with it. But the fact that Native American people are still here, they're thriving, uh, we're, we're, we're growing, mm -hmm. we're contributors to the society, it, it speaks very well of the culture and of the people. And I think the FAM, even the struggle of getting yeah. the FAM uh, museum, like that in and of itself, I think mirror images a lot of the Na Native American people. And I hope one day, um, I, I, I went through it the first opening day, but it was kind of a quick, I, I really haven't yeah. had a chance to spend the real time I want to spend there. Uh, but I hope someone, you know, 
captures that story because again it, it's storytelling yeah yeah yeah. and it, i mean it it's a it's a cool building it is you know when you drive when you see it and you drive by and like you know you see the photos of it uh, a mutual friend uh, a friend of mine took some photos of it mel willis and she does amazing work and i i, I posted some of her photos and, and she's like yeah i took those like a long time ago <laughs> like well, it was been done but still like yeah. it's, and, and it's you amazing look at, and you look at the uh, development the chicken saws are doing around it the that's three, right yeah. you know, near, almost 400 million dollars it's going to go in and development yeah. around um, um, that district. I mean, it's just, it, it is the crown jewel of Oklahoma. And I'm, I'm so proud to be Chickasaw and so proud Governor Anatubby, uh, his leadership, you know, really is, is leading, yeah. leading there. Yeah. Uh, talking, I guess, going into the future, what's kind of like, you know, uh, you don't strike me as someone who listening to your whole story, you don't strike me as someone that's like in five years, I'm going to be this in 10 years, I'm going to be this. Right. So for you, I mean, ideally, what where would you like to be? What would you like to do? Whether that's politically with the bank? I mean, what, you know, what do you kind of see maybe even just next year coming forward? And then yeah. I guess the, the short term plans that you do have. Well, you know, I, I want to see this bank continue to grow. Yeah. I mean, I really think we're making a difference and building better lives for everyone. It's not just a slogan here. I mean, mm-hmm. you, you see us um, you know, really impacting people's lives in a very positive way, and so I want to. I want us doing more of it. Uh, I want us uh, to to even uh, to stretch our territory. I want us to grow territory, but I also want to see our, our people continue to grow and develop. I mean, we, we've got some stories here of people that we've hired. Um, you know, I think of one young lady who came to us. She she had. Um, you know, she had had a challenging, you know, early years of her life. She came here, wanted to work here. We gave her an opportunity. She's continued to advance. And like every time I see her, yeah. it almost brings tears to my eyes because I think this is exactly, and, and like I have to reframe myself so I don't get all goofy and weird around her, make her feel uncomfortable yeah. because I'm so proud of her and what she's accomplished and what this place means to her. And so mm-hmm. I want to see us do more of that. Uh, on a personal level, man, in five years, I've got a daughter who's a junior right now. Yeah. Uh, and I want to see her with lots of scholarships uh, <laughs> to pay for some college uh, somewhere, somewhere not too far. Yeah. Uh, my son is in seventh grade. So I guess that's, I guess he'd be right there Close in five enough, years yeah. too. He'd be right there too. So I want to see him with even more scholarships because it'll be more expensive mm-hmm. when he gets there. Uh, so I, I definitely will, will be here in Oklahoma and, you know, I'll, I'll always make a contribution. I mean, I can't, l- listen, this country, the state has been too good to me. I've had amazing life experiences that, you know, that, yeah. you know, a kid from Lawton, Oklahoma just shouldn't have had. And and so I do believe like like the Chickasaw philosophy and the biblical teachings of to whom much is given, much is required. If, when you've been given as much as, as I have, and like I tell my kids, if you were born in America, you're born in a middle class family, you've got all your... Yeah. You, you know all your faculties about you you don't have any physical or, or mental limitations there's a lot expected of you and so um, I'll, I'll definitely continue to, to make contributions in the public sphere and, and, and in the private sector and, uh, at what level I don't know I mean you, you never know you how never those know, yeah. work but um, I certainly will make myself available and uh, I'll continue whatever I'm doing uh, to be serving the people of Oklahoma and the people of the Chickasaw Nation so yeah finishing up then you mentioned on a, on a personal level Level to go a little bit further and to get to know a little bit about you obviously it's no secret that you dress well you love fashion you know we touched on this obviously in part two um i mean other you know on just kind of like like i said a, a personal level like you know we're I think when we touched on in part one, you drew, you know, you mentioned there's a lot of, a lot of uh, personalities in the church growing up, right? Yeah, yeah, so like yeah. you get your, you know, absolutely. your dress sense is, is, is muted compared to theirs, right? Oh, absolutely. I'm um, like the conservative, you know. Yeah. Uh, you know. But, but I mean, what, what I ask is like, you know, I guess something for you, like, you know, what do you like to go out and do when you're not working or not, you know, doing when, when you just you family, whatever it is, like, what are your interests? Um, you know, for me, it's golf, right. But, yeah. but for you, you know, you cars and fashion, I mean, what, what kind of gets you going? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, fashion, I think more of a, as a curse, honestly, like, like <laughs> it, it, it's, it's my mom cursed me. She, yeah. she was such a, uh, 
a, a person of high fashion and that I, I just naturally kind of picked up on it in style and style mm-hmm. and actually it, it, you know early part of my career I was an elected official and so you know you want to look the part you want to yeah. look distinguished I want to look older and so a, a lot of that I, I, I kind of held back but as you as you get older being your authentic self is you know yeah. what, what, what kind of shoes I have on or what kind of shirt I have on that doesn't define who I am and you know there's there's a real person there I certainly don't want to look silly uh, or, or you know flamboyant yeah. but, but I've, I've got some individuality and I don't mind expressing it uh, and I'm certainly a lot more comfortable doing it now but uh, what I do for fun uh, is not fashion at all uh, I, I actually don't enjoy shopping uh, but what I do for fun uh, a lot is music. Um, I'm a huge music buff. Okay. I mean, you follow me anywhere on social media, T.W. Shannon, uh, you'll usually find me at some live concert, music performance, yeah. singing loud and being obnoxious. Like, I'm I'm not the person you want to sit behind at a live music performance. I'm just warning. <laughs> well, you're you not going to be able to stand behind you, you either. You don't want to stand behind me. Anything. That's even worse. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um, and yeah. so, you know, we, my wife and I, we, we spend a lot of time at, at, at music um uh, events and, and right now, so much of the rest of our time, our weekends are usually with kids stuff. Now, mm-hmm. whether it's my daughter's cheerleading or son basketball or track yeah. or, 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 or cross country, or uh, and he said he's going to do soccer this year too. So that that t- tends to take up a lot of it. But yeah. outside of that, you know, usually traveling. Uh, you, I like to take family trips as a kid. Uh, my dad was always good about throwing us in a car and going to some state Damn. lodge, and so we're still making our trek. Uh, we do some RVing. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, some uh, th- this is at the end so you caught me at the end of RV saying so now I'm ready to sell it I'm over and I'm done but I guarantee you in the spring I'm like I can't wait we gotta yeah. get out there so it kinda runs this cycle so RVing music and family stuff that tends to take up yeah, most yeah, of yeah. my free time what's that I mean what, what are the songs on the playlist then what, what music man so I, I love anything uh, I love gospel like 90s 2000 gospel Kirk Franklin Fran Hammond that's kinda my go to stuff Yolanda Adams I love, you know, kind of old school R&B, anything Motown, you know, 70s uh, music. I love it. But also, you know, I, I like some of the uh, uh, standard stuff. I like Buble and, and, and Frank Sinatra. Uh, I like some of the newer artists. I like The Weeknd. Uh, my, my son's got me listening. I try to keep up with the kids a little bit. Yeah. I can't I can't quite do Cardi B. I can't <laughs> quite get into I've never been a hip hop guy. Once you find out exactly what yeah, she's saying, I can't do yeah, it either. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. just not. It doesn't say with me. Not my deal, but yeah. but, I, but I respect artistry, and uh, I try not to be too judgmental. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I know old fogies didn't like my oh, yeah. music either, yeah, yeah. Uh, so that that's part of it. Uh, so yeah, de- definitely. But you know, you, you'll always find Michael Jackson, Whitney Houston. I'm a kid of the '80s. Mm-hmm. Uh, you'll always find them. Prince is always on on repeat. Um, my kids say I like old people's music, so I, I, I like a lot of oldies. But yeah. I'm trying to think who else. Uh, Ariana Grande uh, I like some of the pop stuff um, oh. she, she's certainly talented I like the legends Dinah Ross is, is, is definitely one of my favorites um, Lionel Richie uh, so really from that R&B yeah, yeah. kind of pop persuasion for sure but, I, but it, it'll I'll run I'll throw in a little Pavarotti every now and then or yeah. uh, uh, some, some, some Mozart my kids are very musical and uh, they stretch me a lot mm. uh, uh, musically but I'll, I'll, I'll even throw in uh, some some country. I mean, there I can I can get some of the old school country, yeah. not the new country, but some of the old school. So it runs the gamut, but ninety yeah. percent R and B, old school classics. Well, finishing up then. Christmas season is coming up. Obviously, you know we're recording this before Thanksgiving. Uh, two questions: When does Christmas start for you? When do the tree go up? When does everything start? And then the other question is: What is your favorite Christmas song? Um, so when does Christmas start? It, it, it depends. So we, we try to get the tree up before thing. We try to have it up by Thanksgiving Day. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes when we're traveling, if we're traveling for Thanksgiving, we try to do it. But I actually got my lights up already at my yeah. house. So they're out and they're on. Uh, I posted it on social media last night. I said, I'm that guy. I'm the Griswold. Yeah. And it's loud and it's obnoxious, too. <laughs> uh, it's a lot of lights. You so love Christmas. Then. I do love Christmas. Yeah. Uh, but I love Thanksgiving more. Thanksgiving is okay. my favorite holiday. But I love Christmas, too. I love uh, the, the, the meaning of Christmas where we're... We're celebrating the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. But I also love some of the kind of uh, secular traditions of Christmas, too. So you asked me about my favorite Christmas song. Um, I love chestnuts roasting on an open fire. I like 
the traditional tri- Christmas music. I like yeah. Ben Crosby, Nat, Nat King Cole. Uh, but Mariah Carey's All I Want for Christmas is, I mean, it, it's become a classic, right? It, 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 it's become one of those two. So I, 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 I like that one. Um, yeah, I, I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Man, that's hard to say. My favorite Christmas song. Um, I, I love Donny Hathaway. Then. Yeah. Um, Would it be a, a, instead of a song, then the artist? Because this, this, you know, you mentioned Sinatra, Buble. Yeah. Like, like they, they've sang some fantastic Christmas songs, haven't they? I'm a Sinatra fan, so yeah. for me, it's like it's. I prefer the classical Christmas rather than Mariah and the whoever. Sure, sure. Yeah, so, I saw you kind of roll your eyes when I said not Mariah. A fan you, of Mariah. You, 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 couldn't, you couldn't get. You <laughs> I can't couldn't hide get. that. Yeah. Um, uh, she's my wife's favorite, <laughs> absolute favorite artist. Uh, I probably say favorite Christmas right now. I tell you, my favorite Christmas album right now mm-hmm. is the one that was put out last year by Leslie Odom. Okay. Uh, Leslie Odom, you know, who was one of the leads in in Hamilton. Mm-hmm. Uh, his Christmas album, I think he is he's like the the eighth wonder of the world, and that album he did for Christmas is just phenomenal. So I have yeah. to check that one out. Yeah. Uh, well, yeah. I mean, thanks so much. Appreciate you, you know, doing part two of the podcast uh, and sharing some more stories, some more personal stuff, which everyone loves to know that stuff, right? You know, the whole goal of the podcast is to find out, you know, after reading the bank's bio or your bio is to dive into the intric- intricacies and, and tell the stories, you know, about, you know, your family, your grandmother eating, you know, the, 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 the what you thought was grass at the time, <laughs> you know, and growing up in the church and, and, you know, back to, back to what we mentioned, you know, earlier was, you know, they always knew that you were going to be in a position, right? The church always kind of told you, you're going to mm-hmm. be a pl- pl- you're going to be a person of influence. You're going to be in a place of influence, um, which t- p- most of them thought you'd be a preacher. No doubt, you know, absolutely. you had the same thing, didn't realize you'd be, you know, to where you are today. So I uh, really appreciate your time. Thanks for sharing. I know there's a lot of people have learned so much about you in this podcast. And um, if they want to reach out, you mentioned the social media is a huge part of your life. Uh, but if people want to follow you and reach out, what's the best place to do it? Absolutely. I'm on all my social handles are TW Shannon. And I also have a new website coming out, TWShannon.com. So that, that'll be uh, yeah. uh, coming forth uh, very shortly social media can't censor that website for you like they, like right. they might exactly do on right. your Instagram which <laughs> I'll leave it at that uh, but yeah thank you so much for your time and for everyone listening I'll post the links in the description and we'll catch you next episode cheers thank, thank you this podcast is presented by the Oklahoma Hall of Fame telling Oklahoma story through its people since 1927 for more information on the Hall of Fame go to www.oklahomahof.com and follow them on Instagram for daily updates at Oklahoma HOF. Thank you for listening. We are inspired by those around us and hope that you are too. Make sure you subscribe to this podcast on your favorite podcast platform and leave us a review so we can keep telling your stories. For more great Oklahoma content, follow This Is Oklahoma on Facebook and Instagram.